Okay, we're back here inside theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's coverage, exclusive coverage of uh, HP Discover 2012 in Las Vegas. Uh, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. We're here with Scott Genero, a longtime friend and CUBE alum. Last saw you at NAB. Welcome back to theCUBE. Great you. to see you, always yeah, a pleasure. Good to see you. And uh, HP Discover, you know, we just, we can't get enough of these events, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it's good, it's a good show. All the customers are here. Um, so tell us, we, you know, NAB, different type of, right. of vibe, right? This is really the enterprise customer, kind of your sweet spot, right? Right, right. What, uh, what's going on here at the show for you? No, it's actually a good show for us. Uh, you know, we uh, are part of HP's Cloud Agile program, mm -hmm. and uh, as part of that, we partner with HP to provide our solution with HP technology underneath it. Um, you know, so kind of the MSA, servers, those types of functionality, networking, switches. Uh, for a total solution for you know enterprise cloud customers. So how's that work with, with Cloud Agile? I mean, I, I'm familiar with the program because I remember it back when 3PAR right. you know, launched. It was a great marketing program, now they've yep. extended it in HP. Mm -hmm. Where do you fit in that? Well, I think the key is is that, you know, I mean, if you, if you listen to, and I've, I've sat and listened to Dave Scott and Tom Joyce and the guys who run the you know, business unit for storage, and you know, there's clearly a spot that they're very focused in on, right? It's that, you know, that 3PAR space, the data you know, deduplication you know, products they have. Uh, you know, but there's clearly areas, and you'll call it outside in that white space area that they don't have solutions for. To be frank, I'm not sure if they really are focused on it today, right? And I think in the you know cloud agile program, what we do is that we you know fill that void for them, you know, for enterprise tier three, tier four type data in the enterprise space for cloud. Okay, so um, so we're here at HP, and and I have to say, so it's been interesting to listen to. So they they have the Converge Cloud. Right. They talk about that a lot, and they've got a public cloud component of that. And um, I'm hearing a, a dissonance in that, you know, we've talked about this a lot, Scott. I mean, one of the, the value propositions that you bring to the table is, if I don't want, if I want better SLAs than I can get from the public cloud, let's say, for instance, from, from right. Amazon. And not great, Amazon's great, love Amazon, yeah. you know, great innovations, but, you know, they are what they are. You, you, this, these are the terms, if you don't like it, right. you can email us and we might respond, but right. good luck. So you guys are trying to fill that void for enterprises, and I think you've done a good job there. Um, HP is really talking a lot about OpenStack mm -hmm. in its public cloud, so they're using Swift as an object store, which is really, in my mind, you know, somewhat lower end than, than S3. Right. Uh, but so the dissonance I see is HP's this enterprise customer trying to provide um, better SLAs than S3, but you know, then OpenStack might not be ready for prime time. I don't think it's ready for prime time. We've written that. So, What's your take on all that? You know, what do you see as shaking up? Am I getting it right in terms of where you fit in the whole spectrum? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I, I, you know, and there's, there's always marketing and reality, right, um, about it all. And I, I really believe that when you look at people who are using Swift technology today, it's just not enterprise ready. That doesn't mean, by the way, you can't use that technology for development, you know, uh, lower end, not a lot of functionality type environments. There's mm -hmm. always a space for that. This is a, I mean, the data space is a huge space, right? So, you know, there is a space for that. Um, we kind of look at the Swift technology a lot of times and say it's more of commercial, more than enterprise, right? You know, it's individuals using it, putting data out there. Um, you know, SLAs actually tend to probably be less, um, but some of that's how you support it and what you do. Um, you know, we all know Amazon doesn't do a lot of support. It's all, you know, go to the website and go see A, B, and C. So maybe, I don't know, maybe HP is going to do more around support that's going to make that a little more um, SLA friendly, you know, compared to how Amazon does it. Um, but from a technology point of view, um, you know, Swift technology today doesn't have a lot of features and function capabilities that an enterprise, large enterprise customer would use it for, like what we have. So um, it still has a long way to go. And as I've always said, it's something we watch, it's something we look at. Um, if you believe, and you know, there's a reason why, by the way, um, when you look at it today, all the major vendors you know, have partnerships with us. Um, they all say they have cloud offerings and they all have partners with us. And there has to be a reason why. And the reason why, obviously, is there's things that we do, or the capabilities that we do today that they just don't have somewhere else and we're filling the gap. So you used to sell you know, Big Iron. Yep. Um, very successful career doing that. When you go and sell today, are those big iron companies even bidding on this stuff? Well, it's actually interesting. You know, people ask me all the time, who's our competition? We don't lose against other cloud companies. You know, um, we very rarely see Amazon in the Fortune 500. Very rarely. It doesn't mean someone might not bring up their name, but if they're lucky to get a phone call back, and I joke about that, but I got to tell you, I've heard that a lot from customers. Um, 
You know, they, uh, you know, we don't see them a lot. You know, people ask me about Google and they ask me about Microsoft. Well, Google and Microsoft are really focused on trying to drive their apps into the cloud. It's not really what we do. Uh, once again, very different. So we typically are competing against box vendors, trying to buy traditional boxes. And so in that scenario, it's really interesting. The company we probably compete with the most is EMC, which is not unusual uh, because of their install base and what they do. The company that's probably getting hurt the most in the sense of the data that we're taking out of the install base is NetApp. Mm -hmm. So we, I've been talking about OpenStack for a long time and following it since this really started with, uh, with Rackspace. And it's always been clear that they've always wanted the developer. And the developer has been a target. So it's clear that HP is essentially, I wouldn't say dissing the enterprise, but they're not really enterprise ready. Uh, it's public cloud. However, I've also been saying, uh, and talking to the, um, other folks who have started like Loud Cloud and other companies in the past, this, this platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, is a race to zero. Uh, and so there's really always been those two schools of thoughts. Race to zero, kind of the hosting model, and then the differentiation with software SLA. So, so you have that dynamic, and we've debated it, and, and, and it's been no contest, really. It, everyone acknowledges that if you're going in and doing just basic stuff, it's a race to zero. Right. If you come in and add value with like software on top of it, um, it's something a little bit different. So I, I think what they're doing here is with, with Swift is obviously saying, hey, we really care more about the developer right. and not really push any real features. Right. So I think that's why you guys are at the table uh, with HP. But I wanted to ask you, given that this race to zero value conversation, the differentiation is coming. How do you guys uh, approach that? Because obviously you're, you have successful deployments in the petabyte scale. Right. Um, it's you know, not a race to zero. You have to be bulletproof. You got to have the value. Yeah, you know, it's funny. And there's, there's, there's kind of table stake value, we call it. And then there's true, true value. And you know, some of the table stakes is just the mere fact that you can use deduplication into the cloud. You can encrypt into the cloud. We, we just, we, we're competing today in a transaction against Isilon. There is no, there's no encryption. There's no encryption capability in some of those products. If you really want to be able to basically put data into the cloud, encryption's table stakes, you got to be able to encrypt. You'd be shocked how many storage, traditional storage products don't have encryption. They got to go buy a third party product to go do it, which is really expensive. So there's a lot of basic stuff you just got to have built in to be able to do that. I personally think what you're going to see, and by the way, let's be fair, this is a big space. I mean, I tell people all the time, people go, oh my God, how are you going to compete against the big gorilla Amazon? Well, when I was at Hitachi, we said, how are you ever going to compete against IBM? How are you ever going to compete against you know, um, EMC when EMC became EMC? I mean, geez, NetApp, we used to joke that NetApp was a little company until they overtook us as a company, and we were a big company. So, um, and that's not even talking about the three pars, the compellents. So there's a lot of room here for you know, different competitors. But to your point, I think it's exactly that. What's your value proposition, right? We truly believe that in the next 18 to 24 months, you're going to see more and more companies do data analytics in the cloud. There's a lot of data analytics, there's a lot of big data conversations, but a lot of that's still being done on a customer's floor. It's really not being done in a cloud, per se. Uh, transcoding, we get a lot of customers asking for that. We have that capability today. Uh, a lot of the rich media companies like to use it. So more and more, I think, as comfortable, customers get more comfortable about putting their data in the cloud and security, yeah. you're going to see, once you own that data, the functionality and services above and beyond that you can offer for that are going to be pretty big. But you're winning some big deals. You have eight petabytes yep. at USC. I've talked to them. I talked to Cerner. I think they were yep. doing two petabytes. Yep. I know NBC has got three petabytes. Yep. So you're you're winning some big deals. Yep. And you're saying you're displacing NetApp, so it's file-based yep. services, and you're running into Atmos at, at EMC. Or well, that's kind of an interesting question. I mean, EMC solutions are all over the place, and. You know, they've got some great technology, it's just dispersed technology that doesn't communicate with each other. They've bought a lot of co companies that don't talk. So right now, their flavor of the month is they pitch everything as Isilon. And they say Isilon has a global namespace. Well, Isilon has a global namespace within a cluster. That's not what we talk about when we talk about global namespace. What do you mean by that? Talk about what, what, well, what's uh, different. Yeah, global name, I mean, right now, if you're anywhere in the world, and you, put your you can put your data anywhere in the world into our cloud, and you can access it anywhere in the world in the cloud, right? You know, in a Isilon type product, um, you know, it, their global namespace, so when you can access it, it's all within a cluster, and a cluster tends to be in a data center. You can do that within a data you know, center, yeah, you can't exactly. do it across it, it's the it's okay. very different, right? And so, there's a lot of these terms that people use, you know, interchangeably, and they're not actually the same how people implement them and what they do. So, very, very, very different. Um, but I will tell you, I mean, we, um, we haven't publicly announced it yet, but we actually have one, a very, very large uh, customer that makes USC, which is almost nine petabytes uh -huh. small. 
and uh, and we expect that um, customer to grow initially from 10 petabytes, probably close to 30 or 40 in the next 12 to 24 months. So you know, and these are big name companies. So more and more customers are looking at doing it. A lot of it has to do with the fact that in addition to our functionality and our SLAs and our capabilities that we've built into it, the other thing that's really in there though is, and, and I think you can't diminish this, and people are starting to separate this, the mere fact that we do public and hybrids and privates, and it's the same file system for all of it, meaning that you can communicate by putting something on a customer's floor and burst it out to the public cloud, and because we manage the whole thing, we manage SLAs, there's no finger pointing. We make sure that it's all communicates, it's all on the same maintenance levels, tech refresh, all that stuff we do and manage um, is very, very important because customers want to do both. They want to put something on a customer's floor and they want to be have the capability of public capability. And a lot of the box vendors are you know, saying, oh, we've got a public cloud, but I don't have a hybrid or a private solution. So then the question is, so what do you do? So you've basically created another island of cloud. That doesn't work. Or what you have is the opposite, which is, okay, I can do private and hybrids, but I don't have a public cloud, or I do, you can use one of my partners, but then how do you control as a customer? There's another body involved, it becomes complex. That's not what customers want. They want someone to manage this, deal with it, and guarantee me SLAs and go do it. So you can drop your node into a, a, a private cloud situation. So Stu was just at uh, SuperNAP. Yep and saw one of your nodes there. Yep. What's going on with, uh, with those guys? Yeah, so we just opened up SuperNAP. We're real excited about that relationship. There, uh, if you've never been there, it's one of the most impressive locations ever. Uh, of course, when I first walked in and, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, they, they had, I think, a, a, one of the guys that was an armed guard. Yeah. I was like, geez, what's in here, Fort Knox? But um, there's a lot of big companies in there. It's a who's who's list. It's, an, it's really a state-of-the-art location. And the great thing about them for us is uh, a lot of those companies now are wanting to just cross connect into our location from that location, right? So imagine, you know, you talk about latency issues, the latency issues go away because basically it's a, you know, it's a, it's a dedicated link directly into our, you know, uh, cloud from those you guys, locations. You guys are doing well, congratulations on the notable deals Dave mentioned. Uh, also you guys just raised $25 million in fresh yep. fat financing yep. uh, and uh, you're growing. Uh, from, from Coastal Ventures, right? So Vinod Coastal, yep. who was that son? And some people in Silicon Valley where I live are saying that uh, what he said is that if Sun was around today, it'd look like Nirvonics. Right. I mean, what do you think about that? Is he, well, yeah, I've heard that. that. Did he get it right? I mean, is that how you look at it too? I yeah. mean, Sun's very successful. No, they are, they are. And you know, I think the early days of Sun, you know, they were very, if there's one thing you guys say about Sun is, they had a lot of interesting technology, right? I mean, they were very innovative of what they did. And I think that's how come they grew so fast to what they did. But if you go back and look at some of the histories, I mean, NFS, you know, was really kind of a Sun creation. You know, if you look at trying to create a global file system back then, uh, that was on Sun's roadmap to go do that kind of stuff. Uh, thin clients, right? You know, it was another idea that Sun, you know, was really ahead of the curve on out there. And cloud, could, the yeah, network is well, the computer. Well, you're right. So <laughs> you kind of look at that and go back, you know, 10 years of what they were talking about. That realization now does look a lot more like today, um, and they never got there. So there's no question um, the analogy of saying, hey, you know, it'd be interesting if they were creating a company today you know, some of the technology that we're using, and to be fair, maybe some of the stuff people are doing in cloud compute um, would look a lot more like that as a company. So I, I don't disagree. I think you guys are focusing on a good area around the enterprise with the SLAs, uh, continue to do that. My question is, who else is operating at this kind of petabyte scale? Because I was at an event uh, and I asked some salespeople from a big partner, um, probably a partner of yours, um, how many customers are doing cloud storage? And not a lot of hands went up in the air. Right. Um, so, like you said, it's a big market. They're probably not talking to the right customers. Right. And, and by the way, they didn't even know what DevOps was. So, so um, again, you have kind of a new class of customer. Can right. you talk about that? One, that dynamic of um, new class of customer, and two, the scale level. I mean, you don't hear a lot of that petabyte scale. Is there a lot of other people doing that? Yeah, actually there really isn't. Um, you know, even, it's funny, when you, I, I go to a lot of shows and I get to go in and watch people present and you know, it's, a, it's the one customer or you look at it and go, okay, that's a great customer, but it's not a, it's not a impressive logo you know, across the board and they, they use it every time they present and talk about. One of the things that I drive our team on very aggressively is every quarter to announce a new group of people using our technology. Um, and we, it's part of our contract, we want to get it out there, we want to talk about it, and we want to drive that. Um, because we want the industry to know that there are a lot of companies out there that have hundreds of terabytes and petabytes of data in the cloud. Our focus right now, when you look at our development schedule, it's not, 
what do we need to build to go support a 100 terabyte or a petabyte customers? We're now focused heavily on what do we have to do to support exabyte customers, because that's where we think it'll go in the next three to four years, is that that's the kind of data that you need to be able to scale to, drive to, and the business issues of managing data like that is radically different. And I, I think I said this once before, if you ask IBM why they did an OEM agreement with us, yeah, they loved our technology, they loved all the stuff we talk about, our global namespace, our data consistencies, but one of the things they also said was, when we went out and looked at everybody, we couldn't find anybody that had the scale of customers, the large customers that you have. And one of the values we saw was, you guys are thinking about things on your roadmap and technology and developing that other customers haven't even thought, or other companies haven't even thought about, because their customers' largest ones are 10, 20, 30 terabytes. And I think that's one of the values we have as a company. It's our focus, it's what we want to drive to. And um, you know, I think we're having some success at it. What about some of the guys you used to sell big iron to? I mean, they're obviously having a lot of success. I mean, right. for, for instance, USC and Cerner, the interesting thing about them is they're, they're IT shops that are basically becoming you know, right. service providers and, and very fascinating there. Um, but you, like I said, you sold a lot of big iron in your day to banks, right. insurance companies. Are those guys starting to look at cloud storage? Big, yeah. I think, I think this will be the year in the next 12 months that you're going to see a lot of financial institutions go to the go to the cloud. So will you be able to announce that or are they going to be like typical financial institutions you can't we, announce we, it? We, we will be able to announce some of yeah, that. Yeah, so I mean that would be, if you can get your, your foothold there, you know what that's like. I, I mean, agree. You, you, you live that for I agree. a long time. Can't say much <laughs> more about it, but uh, I will tell you that um, you know the tipping point in that area I think is starting. Um, I was in New York last week. Um, I was in front of almost every major Wall Street bank um, I'm back there next week. Uh, th the interest of that at that level is huge. It's huge. Um, and I think once again, when you hear about some of the new wins that will roll out over the next quarter or two, um, you're going to see why it's huge. Yeah, we had that conversation earlier with uh, HP here with uh, uh, Nunez, who runs marketing, and talked about new, the definition of what yep. tiering means, new tier one. Yep. And I think that what you guys are doing is pushing a whole category of a, what a tier, another tier of option right. story. That's, that's still mission critical, not just some backup yeah. farm. No question about it. And the other thing too is, we're looking inside our cloud to even tier within the cloud. I mean, we're talking about you know, looking at, is there ways to tier within the cloud of having a, you know, when we talk about high performance, I'm not talking about tier one yeah. in the cloud, but I'm talking about a higher performance cloud down to you know, a very low performance cloud. I mean, we have customers asking us for you know, keeping data in the cloud, it's almost you know, cold. You're never going to access it maybe once in 10, 20 years, right? Um, and the type of technology and what you want to do there is very different than what you would do for a traditional cloud for tier three, tier four. So you'll see us coming out with different tiers too. So John, uh, Larry Ellison, of course, is on Twitter now. He's got uh, 21,000 followers and he's not following anybody. 21,000 only? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he came on like today or something. But so, he's, he's literally, has, he's not following anybody because he doesn't really give a crap about what <laughs> anybody has to say, but he's got one tweet out there. It says, it says, Oracle's got 100 plus enterprise applications live in the cloud today. And then he trashes SAP. SAP's got nothing but success factors. Um, what do you make of the Oracle public cloud? Well, I, yeah, so once again, very different market than what we're doing. What they're doing obviously is very similar to what Microsoft's trying to do and Google trying to do. Apps. It's yeah. apps. They want, you know, it's, it's a salesforce.com play of, you know, here's a different way to buy our stuff, we'll manage it for you in a location, and you're buying, you know, users and you don't have to put it on the floor. Um, I, I think that's the marketplace to go. I mean, you know, a year ago, Larry thought it wasn't even a place to go, right? We all heard, you know, the jokes he said about cloud. And now so, he acts like he invented it. Yeah, <laughs> we, you know, which is fine. We all, we all want to re reinvent sometimes, but the point is on this, that I think is important, is the fact that, you know, it's the right direction for what they want to do. They don't have a cloud, you know, kind of infrastructure storage as a service type cloud that we do. Um, so we don't look at them as a real competitor in that space. And what they're very focused on, um, and probably rightfully so, is very transactional. Um, you know, high performance transactional type stuff. So, which by the way, to be fair, you know, goes back to the three par discussion here. You know, where three par has done a really good job, and I shouldn't call it three, is it still called three par? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where three par has done a really good job is being attached to cloud compute. You know, for that transactional, you know, cloud compute They've super good application. For that. Yeah, right. and yeah. by the way, it's a great product for that, right? But once again, that's not what we do. We go down into that tier three, tier four, where that type of solution is just too high performance, too expensive to do what we do. Well, I think Oracle, Microsoft, you mentioned, you know, big, big cloud place is great for you guys. Yeah, 
you know, Oracle's entry in the cloud, I mean, it, it helps legitimize it. Invalidates and validates it, People no question. will say, okay, well I need this object store, I need this you know, <laughs> place to go, the right. repository, well, one of the, and then they're going to see they don't have it, that's yeah. where you guys Well, fit. one of the things we're starting to see a lot, which is kind of interesting, is we're starting to see a lot of people do database dumps into our cloud. So even though you could argue that you know, for what Oracle's focused on today, which is probably where they need to start focusing on because that's the right place, that's their sweet spot, but over time, you know, backing up databases into more of a traditional what we do cloud is going to become more and more important. Well, and I think, you know, data is often, as you know, been viewed as this liability. You know, people always saying, gotta get rid of the data, get rid right. of it. And now people are saying, well, wait a minute, maybe not get rid of it. Let's just put it in the cloud somewhere because we might need it. Let's start analyzing it. What do you see as the big data uh, opportunity in your space? Well, I mean, I think, but you brought up a good point. I mean, I think data, I, I think storage and cloud and has gotten to a price point now where it just makes sense to keep everything, mm -hmm. right? And then of course, everybody wants to do some sort of analytics or you know, data mining or whatever you want to call it, you know, against that data. And I think that's important. I mean, you know, when I get on Yahoo or Google, off on the right are the, you know, ads of me trying to buy something, which happens to be the stuff that I've been researching for the <laughs> last week. You know, is that coincidental? No, they're, they're data mining. They know exactly what I'm looking at and what I'm doing. And, uh, and, and it's the same thing with all this commercial type data that customers want to do. Uh, also lawsuits, I mean, data compliance issues, going back and doing that. But even banks, you know, what banks want to know is, how do they get more of your business, right? So if you have a bank account with these guys, why don't you have a mortgage and an auto loan and everything else? And the only way to do that is to look at this data, look at your patterns, who you're doing business with, and go from there. Uh, you got to store that data somewhere. And the cloud's a great place to do that. So John mentioned uh, the investment from Kozla Ventures. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, if I say why Kozla, it's an obvious reason, but what do they bring to the table for you guys? Are they bringing any? Yeah, yeah, new we're, innovations and change yeah, for you in terms of the We're very, process. very, very excited that, you know, uh, Kosla decided to invest in us. Um, you know, we had, you know, multiple term sheets. Um, you know, I uh, went through it a lot. We did a pretty deep evaluation. Kosla is one of the top tier, you know, um, VCs uh, in the world. So we're excited about having it. They're very much focused on technology. They're, a, you know, heavily focused on game-changing technologies, I'll tell you that. Um, so we're pretty excited. We think they really have validated some of the stuff that we've been talking about and doing. Um, you know, and the money, what we're talking about, is really focused in on you know, investing more in our future technology. We're opening up a cloud competency center up in uh, Boulder, Colorado. Um, we looked at many locations. We chose Boulder to go do that. Uh, so we've already hired close to six to eight new you know, um, solution architect engineers. Dave Barr, um, you know, who used to work for HP, re leads up that group. Uh, he's going to be, uh, you know, continuing to hire for that, and then obviously we're going to continue to invest in sales and marketing and expand our business. But um, once again, very focused on where do we take this technology? Because we we agree with the industry analysts and you know a lot of our OEM partners, we're probably anywhere from 18 to 24 months ahead of the competition. I just want to make sure in 18 to 24 months from now, we're still 18 yeah. to 24 <laughs> months ahead of the competition. And I think I think more importantly, I think you guys are a category creation opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think. So you're in a spot that's kind of interesting, right? You're, you have such great success and track record, but yet no real defined competition. Right. So, so to me, I think in, when you have these massive changes with big data, uh, the economics are changing right. and use cases are changing, and, and I think you're driving that economics. So uh, congratulations. Thank you. I mean, you know, we're, we're here to build a business, right? Um, you know, we're not here to do a quick turn. We're growing a business. We want to grow up you know, a business that's going to be big, focused in a space to go after that. And we think, you know, um, Having Coastal as one of our investors is really going to allow us to go do that. Scott Genero, inside the Cube again, a Cube alumni, uh, favorite guest, always been on. Whenever we had the Cube, always now stop by anytime. As as always, great insight, game changing opportunity with cloud storage, real enterprise cloud storage. Uh, this is the Cube. We'll be right back with our next guests, or a wrap up for the day. Dave and I will wrap up uh, day two here at HP Discover right after this short break. <laughs>